Hello. All right. I always start with good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. And um, we have some wonderful people here today. And as they begin to answer questions about the topic, they'll just give their name and uh, go from there. We'll do that. So um, the topic is very um, hard for many people, especially with the cancer new moon coming up. I would say in the last four weeks, there's been a lot of emotions. People have changed by leaps and bounds in the last six to four weeks because of the eclipse that we've had. But I think that once you get a, a hold of what has changed you and made you better, then um, that makes a difference in who you are. So um, I've been going over this topic and trying to put a head on it. I think we started with who's teaching you and how you're being taught and how you see a constructive criticism. A lot of it came out of when I was um, talking with Nicole, uh, I think it was Tuesday, but I think it's um, necessary for us to go back and really um, look at what made us. And um, that brings us to the storms. So I'm gonna read something and then I'm gonna let you guys go all right and when i'm reminded of the storms it, you know i go into always i always use the bible in my life um and i know a lot of people they're on a path where you know they see different and that's fine but i have to have guidance for myself and so i'm going to read this concerning the storms it says jesus calms the storm that day when evening uh, came, he said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. Um, they took him, and this is in Mark 4, 35 through 41. Um, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along with, I mean, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in a stern, sleeping on a cushion. Disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And so um, I want to remind us that there's, there's three signs in uh, the zodiac that are more prone and susceptible to emotional turbulence, which is cancer, um, Pisces and um, Scorpio, right? And with that being in mind, I want you guys to bring a focus to um, the changes in the last four to six weeks and how it has, um, how anything that's come up has affected you. Because your response to situations is going to predicate the outcome of a situation, meaning that your reaction um, is going to predicate the outcome. And that's because we are all responsible for our own selves. Accountability, um, integrity, all of these things are what we hold. And um, I do understand that we go through things in life and it feels like it's just us. But after you come out of just us, which is part of the storm, then where are you? And do you hold that just us or just me? Because just me can become a victim that stays actually in the storm and they don't realize that they're still there, right? Right. So uh, let's see, my first... Who want to go first? Storms. I, I can go first. Um, okay. One of the things you asked, and, and I thought it was so synchronistic for me, is was um, what have you learned in the past four to six weeks? And I was literally just maybe about an hour ago thinking about how much I've grown in the past six weeks. Um, and I think for me, it has been 
really f just a, um, a heightened consciousness and freeing my mind in a way that may has been making it so clear that the things that I have experienced throughout my life one I was looking at it from a limited perspective which came from a place of really self-centeredness and realizing that it wasn't just because I perceive a thing to be a thing doesn't mean it's that thing. Right. And um, it's been really game changing, life changing, because those things that in the past that may have had me stuck and unable to move beyond, I'm seeing it completely differently. And in a way where it's just like, wow, that situation or that person was just my mirror. And what I thought was keeping me bound was, a, a, you know, was a lie, was false, was distorted, you know, a distorted percep perception. So um, I've definitely been, and I'm a cancer sign. So, I, you know, these energies <laughs> hit me uh, hard right now, but, um, it's been so eye-opening and I'm just grateful for the lessons because it's, it's these type of situations and revelations and epiphanies that really, I think, propel you to the next level mm -hmm. in terms of your consciousness and awareness. Right. Okay. Nicole? Well, hmm. it's kind of been similar, the week. realizing that everything around you is mirroring and um, how you have created a, a cesspool of self-centeredness <laughs> like, and um, learning to just walk through and learning to accept that okay it is what it is this is what I did and um, I'm gonna have to walk through this in a different manner myself um i deal with a lot of anger so i've been going from one from crying to feeling like i need to jab out and when i balance that with my meditation because i have to start thinking about the way i communicate with people um so it won't come back on me so i won't continue on the cycle of negativity or unbalancedness and the realization it's just like I have to sit down and I know that I need I want to do something about it but I can't do nothing about it I have to sit back and just accept it and then I will flow with the flow I will go with the flow and the flow is would be positive it would be different from what I perceived it to be so I'm knowing I just sit and wait on my next epiphany, the next thought that um, can keep me on my purpose. Good. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Jasmine? Uh, this uh, has been a difficult question for me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um but Good. for as long as i've been having sessions with you i've always up until recently up until like uh, i started back again i always was like well that person did this to me and that person did that to me and i never took it into accountability what i did or what part i played and or what role i played and whatever situation was going on now i look at okay well how did i affect that person and how did what i affect that person cause the outcome or what did I do or what could I have done differently to prevent that outcome or a certain outcome now I always look at me first like what did I do what role did I play how can I hold myself accountable for what I did instead of just well that person did this and this person did this to me and it's their fault no it's not always someone else's fault sometimes it, it is it's your fault sometimes it's you sometimes you're the problem okay all right so 
uh, Ashley. Hi. Hey. Um, so <laughs> lyric. <laughs> <laughs> so thinking about this question um just realizing that every situation um similar to what jasmine said everybody's accountable all parties are accountable and something that i've been realizing more frequently also is you only meet yourself and other people so when a situation arises the first thing that i think about when i go to react emotionally because I'm a cancer, so the emotions come out. Okay. And the first thing that I do now is I stop myself and I go, okay, what am I, what do I need to learn here? What is this teaching me about myself? Whether it's the insecurity, whether it's something I haven't healed, whether it's a test to see if I really did release what I thought I did. Did I really heal from the situation? Or is there something that maybe I didn't really pinpoint within myself and then going, okay, I don't need to react emotionally because I need to sit with this. I messed up. I created this situation because we all create our own circumstances. We all create our own realities. Mm -hmm. And then reflecting on it and going, nope, I don't have to do this. I don't have to play that part again. I don't have to let this control me. I need to get in control of myself so I don't get swept up in my emotional storm. Because I can. Preach. <laughs> so I've honestly, um, even within the past few weeks, um, in having my sessions with Miss Kim, really reflecting on balancing nature and nurture and recognizing I don't always have to overextend myself i don't always have to throw myself into a situation mm -hmm. things will work themselves <laughs> out so it's kind of like now i'm like i have to let the chips fall where they may and i have to analyze the situation from what do i now need to learn and what do i now need to revisit that i haven't been learning okay good uh frequency hey hey um I would have to say over the last six weeks, it's been uh, very, very uh, telling and eye-opening because it's almost been the equivalent of, you know, when you're in class and every subject that you have, you have to study for exams. So it's exam time. And even though they're different subjects, different dynamics, they all come back to the center of what have to learn and so taking a step back and being able to process that you're in a storm what are the elements of the storm did you have a warning before the storm began what was your part in preparation of the storm are you familiar with the storm you know and it all came back to for me not just so much the conscious mind but the elements around it meaning as uh, and I can't speak for everybody, but uh, the experience that I've had as far as going in and out of time, um, from the past, um, from current time, then the future with similar dynamics that you've experienced in the past, although it's like it's ramping its head up and it, it looks different. It may seem a little bit different, but the energy in it is definitely an energy that is making you get into that place of consciousness where you can say i've been here before so how did i handle the situation in the past and where am i now with the tools and everything that i have to move forward and so for me the last six weeks have literally brought me to from teenage years to um young 20s and current time right now and to how things have manifested with what I have contributed to those situations um, versus also what I've learned. And I'm a Leo, so you know our aggressive energies <laughs> as far as cre also creating can be um, somewhat complex. And so I'd have to say over the last six weeks, I've learned definitely in the beginning um, of this walk, of this journey, including Miss Kim with the sessions that I've even had from you in the beginning was really learning to walk solo and in that solo getting into that quiet place of my 
mind and being able to depend solely, depend solely on source as hard as it can be, because as those storms are coming, you're looking for other people to throw in life jackets. You're looking for other people to kind of help pull you out of that storm. Um, when the most, when the most relative thing that you may have forgotten consciously is that God got you out the storm the last time mm -hmm. and the last time and the last time and the last time he was the one that rescued you during that time. But if you have several subjects, if you will, or several storms that are coming at you at the same time, then the perception and how you respond to that storm becomes very, very relative in getting you into that place where you can actually break down your mind. And breaking down your mind gives you the ability to process, how can I ride the wave? Obviously, God thought that I had the endurance to do so. Mm -hmm. And then what was my contribution? Did I get into the storm without a life jacket on? Did I not prepare myself appropriately? Did I not forget about um, all of the, the past behaviors that are now contributing to the storm that I'm in? And so my, my sessions and my, my level of independence of spiritual muscles, if you will, have been over the last six weeks is remember that just because you may have to be in a place where you have to walk alone in that storm, it's only to build you up even further in your conscious mind so that you can make it through the storm alone, relying solely on source and source alone. Um, because we can become codependent you might want to be like that teacher, you know, you're in that class and you keep going back to the teacher and you're like, hey, I need, I need more hours to study. I need, and they're like, look, we went over all the material. You already have the material. You have everything that you need. Now it's just a matter of you believing in the material that you have so that you can get through that test so you can pass that test. Otherwise, you might end up in that class again and again and again. So I would have to say for me, as far as the storm and over the last six weeks, what I have learned, I've really had to break down my mind. Mm -hmm. I really had to get back to a place of consciousness where I can break things down fundamentally so that I can review where I'm at right now as these things are coming into play. And then also what I contributed along the way and the different elements that are coming in, not to take those for granted, but to also learn those lessons and how you could have responded um, or reacted differently, but also getting back to a place of, if you're in the storm and they're coming at you and it's, and it's, it's provoking, not just you know, surface change, it's provoking you to change in such a way that it's life-changing it's life altering to the extent where you, you're gonna remember <laughs> you're gonna remember this part. So the last six weeks I've learned to focus on it's okay that if I can have the conscious side of me solely focus on source and getting back to that level of independence so that I can move forward in the storm and know that you rescued me then, you're gonna rescue me now. All right. So um one of the things about the storm is, is that even though we might see, like the world right now, all over there's a storm. We might see that a lot of people are in the storm, but it's good to focus on the fact that it's me and my ability to overcome the fear of the storm, right? Mm -hmm. So when I look at myself in the storm, where is the storm taking me and who is the storm? Because many people focus on outside extremities rather than the inside storms. That's why I brought up cancer, Pisces, and um, the um, uh, Scorpio, because these emotional issues that people have, they either come from their childhood or as storms or they're coming from something within their um, psyche, which has to do with the zodiac, the energies uh, that they need to maintain. And while we are looking at the outside extremities, we fail to actually engage with 
the inner extremities that's actually triggering the storm. Inside a child, and I'll, I'll give some of the information of what kind of breakthrough I came into within the last two weeks. Um, I was um, raised in a time when children were to be seen and not heard. And I didn't realize how that actually registered with me. So a child five years old myself came to me and um, sat in my lap. And it's not like I've seen that child before, but she said, children are to be seen and not heard. And it went all through me. It was a day of freedom for me because mm. I realized that I had been attracting relationships where I, I was quiet, then I would have passive aggressive um, behaviors and explode. Mm -hmm. The day of freedom came when she sat in my lap and began to tell me, you haven't finished things that you needed to start. You have been working for everyone but yourself. Mm -hmm. And all of that went back to my childhood where I was working to be pleasing to my mother and my family being a good little girl. This is all mm -hmm. that came up. So I took all of this good little girl stuff into my life and then I began to fight the good little girl stuff consciously outside of me over the years. But I never healed. Being shut up. Being put in a position where uh, no one would listen and it registers in your psyche and you can't understand that something is traveling with you and people are not listening. Well, now you understand. They're not listening because that's what you believe. It's one thing to teach people this, but it's another to consciously have a revelation and the revelation says you are free now. Now, I can't tell anybody that they're going to get that same freedom if they don't become truthful with their self because there's a lot of ties that bind us integrity the way that we operate the way that we help each other someone you know uh it's a time of freedom that comes which, uh, you know america is facing mm -hmm. um and so for a person to stay in bondage in their mind and that storm continue you're attracting tumultuous situations around you leads us back to nothing but ourselves. Now, if it was a lesson or lessons that you needed to learn, because in that I learned a lot just from that 10 minute conversation with a little girl and I am at the age that I am right now, many, many revelations that freed me and said, you don't have to be afraid anymore. So what was it that I feared? Losing things. So that fear becomes real. All of this is my storm. It is no one else's. Why do you go through life and you're quiet to other people's uh, situations or what they bring you? Sometimes you have to be quiet because you're learning them as well as yourself. Sometimes you have to be quiet because you are helping them also to become strong. That's why. I ask who is the teacher and who is being taught and who is not. Does the lesson go interchangeably or does the lesson just rely on one? And I wanna to speak to people that dream and see and that they're prophetic and let you know that you're still learning. Mm -hmm. People have gotten this thing about their vision and how they see and they've made it something that is greater than other people i don't do that with my gifting you know i'm always transparent because if you get too high then you're going to be brought down right. and the gift is not ours so who's teaching me you know what i'm saying who is mm -hmm. teaching you are you receiving anything so here in life from this that epiphany very freeing. What I learned is life is interchangeable. Mm -hmm. If you're not giving life to me, then you you can't have life from from uh, me. If you're not giving, right. and I'm not talking yeah. about tangibility, I'm talking about life right now. Because in this here scripture, Jesus asked Peter, 
No, he didn't ask no others because Peter woke him up. That was one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if you are so embraced in your storm, who can help you with a breakthrough? Not even Jesus. Right. Yeah. So who and what is more important? I had to ask myself. Me too. Okay. What you say, Nicole? Me too. I had to ask myself that too. <laughs> if I keep on pondering about what, what I'm going through, I never get out of this because I was really, I want to get out of this. I don't want to be like this. Then I know I'm going to have to go through this because I have to be sharpened for the next phase of life. So it's like, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. I think we are constantly teaching and being taught simultaneously. I think mm -hmm. it comes to a point where it's the level of your consciousness that will determine whether you're even aware of that or not. And I think that's where a lot of relationships, whether they be personal or platonic, are changing in this new season is because I just don't think if you're unaware that you are a giver and a receiver, you are the teacher and you are the student at the same time, like where will the common ground be? Like I, I think we you will definitely be like two ships passing in the storm that are unaware that the other one is there because you really need to be conscious that, you know, even if you are trying to um, give me constructive criticism or criticize or, or correction, there's also a, a jewel in there for you as well. Right. Because we are mirrors. So if, if you're correcting me, it's because it, you're correcting yourself in a way, but I think it's the ego for some people that may interfere with that lesson because, um, again, if you're not aware that you are the student and the teacher at the same time, then you've missed the whole lesson. Yes. Okay. Who's and I wanted to say, just based on what you just said, Naila, is that um, it's not just consciousness, it's also acceptance. Like, you have to accept the fact that you still need to learn because you don't know everything. Right. If you knew everything, you, you would be source and you're not source. Right. So you have to accept the fact that I'm not all knowing, all seeing, hmm. and I still have to learn because there are still, we're all flawed in some way. So there's still some growth. There's still something you can learn. Even if it might seem like a very small lesson, that's sm like Miss Kim just gave the experience of, having that child sit on her lap and giving her that information. That could seem like something very small to somebody else, but yeah. it was such a big revelation for her. Yeah. So right. it's something that we all can experience. You could teach me something. It could be groundbreaking and Jasmine would be sitting having the same lesson and she go, I knew that already. You might have known it, but I needed to learn it because I forgot. But I have to accept the fact that I still need to learn. But then through my learning, I'm teaching you something else as well that might come second nature to me. So. Okay. Talana, you want to add? Yes. Um, one of the things I was going to say is that um, I would always begin my day with what can I learn today that I didn't learn yesterday? Um, since we're constantly evolving and while we have situations that sometimes may put us in a place where we're fixed, it's like if you look at things, you know, um, just even on an earthly plane, there are things that are constantly changing. We have seasons that are changing. We have styles that are changing. We have laws that are changing. You know, we were already um, this, by design to equip our minds to change um, and not be so fixed. And so for me, you know, I have to have a day of learning because I want to, I want to learn something new every single day that is going to not just um, liberate me, but it's also going to liberate other people. And um, the, the, the teacher side, I would say that uh, one of the things that, you know, um, I, I can give full transparency. I can't speak for anybody else, but sometimes you could be comfortable being even just the student um, mm. because you're, you're, 
you're conditioned from that inner child to only be the student and to not be the teacher. Right. And so, um, you know, and, and I, can, uh, I can also piggyback off of what Ms. Kim said as far as growing up in a time of where you're to be seen and not heard. Like that, you know, I can definitely resonate with that. And I was told, you know, well, it's, it's not appropriate time for you to voice those concerns. So you kind of hold on to those things and you're not really sure what your identity is and who you are um, in those belief systems. So that if you see someone that um, in that time, in that era that's speaking up, you don't really know how to process that information because you're like, wait, you're allowed to speak up? How did you... How did you to do that? Like, who gave you, did you get a card? Did you get permission? Like, who get, and then you get into your adult life and you're like, wait a second, maybe I didn't even really necessarily have to have the permission. Like I actually could have a voice and we can have a difference in opinions. And so you learn these things um, at a different rate. And then those things also can transmute themselves into a whole new type of behavior that now you're passing on to not just your kids, but you know, also to other people. So right. you get to learn like, okay, well, first let's start with the fact that I was actually allowed to have a voice. I could actually have an opinion. And in that is a whole nother lesson within itself. And so even at the age that I am, you know, um, you learn that I, I can have a voice. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that I was never not permitted to have one. It just means that that particular level of bondage, if you will, or dynamic that I was in, I might now need to learn how to free myself from that. So we're constantly learning, but it also you also have to have the willingness to learn, the ability to be receptive to learn, to open to learn. Um, because the ego, like this young lady said, it can get in the way. And then not to mention that while you were learned that dynamic, you were also taught under that same dynamic of, of not being seen and being heard to protest against it if you saw somebody else doing it. Right. So it becomes like a multi-dimensional cluster, and I won't say the word right now, but <laughs> it becomes a huge cluster that now you have to try to figure out how to get out of that entanglement. Right. You know, yep. from within. So I would say that the the teaching and, and learning is is an everyday thing and having that mutual respect and understanding um, as your consciousness gets raised that while the teachers, the teachers teaching, they're learning. And while yeah. you're learning, you're also stepping into a role to teach. Okay. Let's see. That's good. Jazz, did you? Yes, ma'am. Um, I also came to the realization at, just to add on what Ashley said, what you said earlier, anybody could be a teacher. Um, I, I, I'm open to all teachers. I, from child to, to like 16 year citizen. I had <laughs> lyric teaching something the other day mm -hmm. and I really wasn't expecting it. Like I got upset about something with work. And so she was like, well, why are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, is it really something that you should be this mad about? And I was like, you're right, lyric. I shouldn't be. She was like, well, well stop being mad. And it was just so simple for her to just stop. And with that, I was just like, she just told me something. And it, it validated me knowing that all teachers come in all shapes, sizes, and ages. But are you open to it? Are you open to the teaching? Or are you open to listening and hearing what, what's being said to you? Even if it does come from a child, or even if it does come from someone who you think is below you. You have to be open to it. If you're not open to it, you're going to miss the lesson. And if you miss the lesson, you might just miss your blessing. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to um, go into this teacher um, because we had parents that taught us things. And they were somewhat of teachers, right? Mm -hmm. But they may not have realized it. And so here we are, um, grown people. I'm, I'm 55 some of you are 45 and under right mm -hmm. and we're living the same experiences and my my thoughts on this is mother father recognizing what they are teaching mm -hmm. number one 
Number one, is it integral what you're showing? Is it something that we use in our lives 24 hours a day? And I didn't put anything on it. I didn't put good or bad on it. I said, is it integral? Because what I saw growing up is not necessarily what I will not produce growing up. It can be a different picture, mm -hmm. but additions of what I came out of the product, right? Mm -hmm. So mother, father, teacher, do they recognize, do we right now? Because what I find as a parent is that I could be accountable for the things that have happened with my children, or I can look back and say, what did I bring that I didn't like in it? Now, children, they're going to they gonna take their own cycles and they're going to do their own thing, but how much am I going to be a part of integrity, non-integrity? Uh, something that they saw 24 hours a day. Oh, the life. Mm -hmm. And then what, what am I doing with it at this point? Because my life with my mother and my father was one thing. But what I took into my adult life, because in the psychological aspect, I took on a non-verbal relationship with everyone. I did not voice my opinion. Mm -hmm. And if I did voice it, it was explosive. So here we are again. How much of that affected my own children? Because those are the parts of me that I want to get rid of, first of all, so that I can have a healthy relationship. Toxicity? Mm -hmm. I don't want it. So how can I say it if I cannot find that in myself, what I don't want. Right. Well, you know, I think some parents realized um, how integral that role is of a teacher and, and some did not. Um, I think it's easy to, to look at the world and see where by the person that you are maybe um, interacting with, maybe their parents did not know how integral that role is. Maybe, you know, even in our own dynamics with our parents, you can see where they may have been or, or wasn't. But I think that um, a lot of parents and yeah, we could talk about both sides of the coin, but I'm going to just speak to the, about the parents that didn't. Um, and I think it, it can come from a place of ego because just like looking at my own, you know, um, examples of this and my, uh, my family, even extended family, I can see how children were just like, oh, you get in a relationship with somebody, you have babies. It's the thing that it's just what you do. But they really didn't understand that you, the things that you believe, the things that are messed up with you, if you don't heal that, you're going to pass that down. You're teaching your child that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of parents did not consider that, how based off of their distortions, their hurts, their disappointments, their fears, how they project that on their children to, to almost make it their, so that their children fe fear the same things, are affected by the same things. You know, I come from um, a family where and I think this goes back to what Frequency was saying is that, you know, you lived your life the way you were supposed to, but a lot of times parents don't understand that 
just because you think it's the best way doesn't mean that you have the right to come mm-hmm. in and dictate how my life should be. Like, be- and a lot of times when they're giving you quote unquote advice or trying to be your guru, it's because it's coming from a place of fear or disappointment. And I think it is terribly, terribly, terribly detrimental to the development of a child if you don't do the due diligence and you don't love to me it's a part of love and I think again that's where things are changing now because we are becoming aware that we can't we can't put this on to our kids we can't project this onto our kids so we have to do the healing with them because it's like we're breaking those generational curses to where it's like that that way of thinking that way of operating ends now because it's not unconditional love. It's not fair to a child that you are just birthing into this world to have its own experience that you project your own madness onto them. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, the past is the past. I- I'm more forward thinking. I know right. it is my intention as a, as a, a mother in the future to be the best example to my child. And, and I think that starts with me doing what I'm, I've, I'm already doing, healing. Okay, good. Who's next? Um, I wanted to, I'm going through this in real time. Um, I am healing myself while raising my daughter and realizing the differences between how my husband was raised and how I was raised. Um, I was raised to have a voice. I was raised to voice my opinion. My my parents sat down and spoke to me. So I wanted to cultivate that same situation for my daughter. In his life, it was kind of like, you do what I say or you get beat. And he wanted to do the opposite. And we needed to find a balance because if you meet my daughter, she's outspoken. She is fearless. She will, she's determined to be exactly who she is. And I want to let her, but I need to refine her. But I can't refine her if I'm not healed. He can't refine him, her if he's not healed. So I'm constantly learning. And Ms. Kim and I had a session about, well, if that's how you were raised and it worked for you, that doesn't mean that's how it's going to work for her. Right. And I stepped back and I said, but I thought that was just the best way. But her life is 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 gonna be different than how my life was she has to see and experience things to create her own reality later that maybe she has to heal from or maybe she has to say i didn't like that so i'm not gonna let that happen i'm not gonna let that enter into my life and like you said Nyla, it comes first from loving yourself and putting yourself first i stopped putting myself first the moment i got pregnant with my daughter because people told me, Ashley, it's not about you anymore. It's about her. So, oh, okay. So everything I started to do was wow. just about her. I, I won't go out out of fear of who's going to watch her, who's going to take care of her. Am I going to trust her? Is she going to be okay? Am I going to worry about her all day long? So these thoughts mm. enter into my mind. And I'm like, I have to get to a place where I'm like, she's okay. She can tell somebody what she does and does not like. Right. Because I cultivated her being outspoken but I also have to realize that if I don't love myself I don't teach her how to love herself Mm -hmm. and that's what I've been teaching her thus far to do things for other people and not do them for yourself so seeing it happen in real time and now switching my focus where I go out I do the things I don't want to do though very limited because of the current situation of the world um I've gotten lighter, healthier, enjoying things more, which has changed our dynamic where we like to spend time with each other. We like to do things with each other. Before it was always, mommy can't tell me what to do. Mommy doesn't know how to do anything. Mommy isn't my teacher. And I'm like, but I am. So we're changing that. And even in what limited aspect my husband does it, he's changing too, because we're having more open conversations about how to discipline her, how to parent her, how to move even move forward in our own relationship. So it's been um, just interesting watching it change for myself in real time. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Who's next? 
just um just to add to what Naila said earlier, um, I think parents. Well, I, um, I don't know about every parent, but um, when I take my dad, for instance, um, kids do as they see, not as the parent says do. So, like, if you, my my dad has always tried to cultivate me to have my own thought process, be my own person, to stand up for what I believed in. But my dad grew up in a household where he had to be meek, where he had to be voiceless. So, and and me doing, or and him raising me and him bringing me up, I learned how to not share what I was thinking and share what I was feeling and then come out because I am a fire sign come out in a passive aggressive way more so sort of certainly aggressive and then have this big explosion where i just either curse you out or i cut you off or i do both right. and <laughs> having <laughs> sessions um i realized that that wasn't healthy um wasn't healthy at all wasn't healthy for me wasn't healthy for the other person um i learned that i had to find my own voice and i had to speak my truth and stand in my truth so like when someone asks me to do something and I don't want to do it, instead of be like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Nah, I don't feel like it. I'm sorry, but I don't feel like <laughs> it. Like it's just those little things and they'll be like, that felt good. It made me feel good. And then once you start doing it more often, like now that my dad sees me doing it, he's starting to do it now. He's starting to cultivate it now. Like someone called and asked me for money. He was like, no, nah, I ain't got it. He's like, well, I got it, but no. <laughs> Jasmine, I feel, I feel you on that, Jasmine, because my cutoff game was it's strong. Man, it was great with the machine. Okay, so we have two. Let's see, frequency or um, Nicole, you guys can go with that and give your thoughts on that. Um, what we were just speaking well, on. I'm a little bit more, I've been through so much, man. I'm just so open. When I, I had a hard time when my daughter went to uh to high uh, to college because it was like after that I ain't had nothing to do. Like I ain't had nobody to control, tell what to do. <laughs> I ain't had nobody nothing to, you know. So I had to really like get with myself. But the problem was I never did that. I, w- I went out and I continued on trying to find things to nurture to substitute um raising my child which she's pretty cool she gonna have her issues and I let her have those things but I never worked on myself I also realized that in working on myself or doing the things that I do um from the things that I I would taught I teach um it was a time where I was younger and I was at a friend's house and I'm a very clean person. So I would clean my area that I'm in. Like, I don't have a problem. If your house is dirty, I don't mean no harm, but I have to get this in order for me to be here. So um, I clean her house and I never noticed until then to now, which is like 20 years later, that she, took on that practice of cleaning her house like after that i never i never know I, I never seen it dirty again i never seen it junky and then she did tell me like years ago that i was the reason why she um kept a, a clean house so when i when i came past me it's like okay you are a teacher when you do what you supposed to do you are a teacher when you're learning things that you're going through. And I learn things from everybody that's around. I'm learning things from everybody on here today, everybody that I encounter with my life. Um, you all are a part of me in some type of way, not like a part of me, but I see something in myself mm-hmm. that teaches me or shows me that this is that subject that mm-hmm. I need to focus on at the time. See, right mm-hmm. now I'm an intellect because I have all these intellectual masters around me and <laughs> this is what I could do. But then when I get into my trigger, that is my problem. Mm-hmm. When I get into that area that when I step into that war zone that I know that's a war zone and I know I got to get there, 
because it's a lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. But that's my test. Nicole, you got to calm down. You can't get mad. You can't foresee the truth, the, the future. You can't foresee what other people are doing, why they doing it, and how they doing it. It's about how you doing it. What have you learned? You have to sit down. My sister always tell me, you have to meditate. If I sit back and meditate while I'm sitting there arguing with somebody, I'm going to feel like a fool. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, when I do that, I feel much better and they calm down because I have learned how to calm down the situation without reacting. Now I'm getting all these little different things coming at me because now I got to make sure I got this because you're going to get tested, but that don't mean um, it's going to stop. We're going to have to keep on going. That sharpness going to keep on coming and sharpen us up. So I'm just like, now I'm just going through it. I know what everybody has given me, my mother, my father. Sometimes the, the earth itself teaches you things. Mm -hmm. From the plants that grow, how the insects are buzzing in the area. Animals that's supposed to be here, they can't be here no more. Because other people have moved in. Um, so my, my sight on it is just, we just all have to teach each other to go through. And I can only teach you through continuing to work on myself, mm -hmm. which I never thought that it would be. I, would, I thought that no one was paying attention to me, but it was me not paying attention to myself. Mm -hmm. Frequency, that's good, Nicole. Control, I like that word, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know listening to all this it it, it definitely um again we're constantly learning so it uh it makes me wish that these communications i could have had when i was younger but i'm grateful for having them now and um what i will tell you um from again growing up in that particular dynamic then also being a parent at the same time, I was a, a very, um, I'll say a young intuitive child mm -hmm. because I had to protest to ask questions um, in certain dynamics that didn't make any sense. And I definitely, I grew up in dysfunction, um, all facets of it. And, but my, but the spirit in me wouldn't, you know, it just wouldn't let it be. So I had to ask questions, whether if it was I went to school and asked a principal, well, what time do you eat dinner with your family? Or where do you guys go? You know, I became like a, a young detective um, trying to see why things didn't line up in my own dynamic, um, you know, at home from drugs and alcohol to, you know, physical and verbal and emotional and so forth. And so um, even as a young child, I was trying to break free and the abilities um, as best I could. And I was thankful to have, you know, angels or um, God sent people to help uplift me in those areas um, from my childhood into my adulthood. And then when I became a mother, you know, if anyone has grown up in dysfunction, the first thing you're doing is like, you're like, okay, everything I didn't have, everything I didn't get to experience, guess what? I'm giving that to you. Even though that kid is like a baby, they're looking at you, you're looking at them, they're like, I didn't ask you for none of that. And you're like, uh-huh, copy that. You're still gonna get it because guess what? I didn't get it, you know? And then, you know, you've got this baby. Now you're overly compensating and not, and not to mention if you're a single parent. If you're a single parent, well, now you just added on a whole nother component because now on top of you overcompensating for what you didn't get, what you didn't experience, what didn't happen to you, now you gotta overcompensate and be like, okay, so now for what they didn't do and what they didn't give, okay, so now I need to compensate for them. And then somewhere by the time you get about 30, you're like, oh, I'm running out of gas. Okay, let me try to figure this out. You know, and on top of that, you're still a child yourself inside because you still have to heal as you're, what, you're, you're you know, watching these dynamics. Now, there are some parents or some individuals that they don't look at that. They just adopt the same behaviors and reduplicate the same type of things over and over again to their children for them to pass down without even blinking, you know? So um, for the parents that 
have to walk through that dynamic. And then also if you're a single parent, you don't know what the other side of that other 50% of dysfunction or other 50% of contribution that that person may have even passed through through DNA. So you're constantly like trying to research that. And then if you don't have communication with that other parent, then you're like, okay, let me take it a step further. Let me just try to find out maybe what you may have been like or what your heritage was or where you guys came from so that you can best equip yourself with the current situation that you're in. For me, I had to place myself in a position of therapy because there were so many things that were unknown. So I had to have other strong leaders that were around me throughout my young adult life because it was a mystery. And in that mystery, it's like, okay, could, did I forget to add that? I don't even know who the other half of who I am because my mother was a single parent, you know? So you walk through these, these different um, dynamics and then now you're in, you're in current um, parent mode and you're hyper-focused on what you didn't get and what wasn't received and what you said you were sought to do and then doing the best that you can on top of that and then also trying to recognize that you don't want to reduplicate um, behaviors that you may have witnessed in, in your youth. So then you got to fight with that because you're like, wait a second, I think that's something that, you know, possibly my mother may have done or possibly I may have experienced with this person or that person. And it becomes, you know, more of a modern day of like <laughs> going back over time, like I said, but being in current time and realizing, okay, well, how can I break down the dynamics of, let me go back to my mother. Let me go back to my father. Let me go back to areas that were still mysterious that I did not address within myself and also within my own parent dy dynamic. Does that make sense? And getting to a place of accountability of like, ooh, okay, I may have contributed to that by default of this. That was an underlining wound that wasn't healed. And it just brings you back to a place of like, it's not gonna be perfect. But in that moment, what are you willing to do as that parent to not just liberate your inner child, but get healing from past wounds and then what you have to do moving forward with your own child or your own children so that you can break free of all of that entanglement. So it still brings you back to a place of, um, of entanglement. I would say that I have learned a lot, um, especially in my own family dynamic. I have definitely seen how everything is connected that I definitely may have overlooked down to the person that you may have married, down to your best friend that you may have been connected to. You can start looking at all those relationships and being like, I get it. It actually, got it. It actually went back to the very, very beginning. Where is the beginning? You know? The beginning was when I was born. The beginning was when I was in high school asking questions. The beginning was when I first had my, my first child. And going back to those elements and being like, well, what did you birth out of that? You know, what, what part of the integrity did, did you contribute to that may not have been so integral, but you doing the best that you can do in that place and being able to recognize it and be like, oh, damn, okay, well, you know, now I'm going to have to go back necessarily to the drawing board, but I need to reevaluate some areas that could have been better, that I could have strived to done better, that I could have, you know, maybe hyper-focused on to get healed. So my dynamic, I can't, I, again, I can't speak, um, but what I can tell you is that it was important for me as a child to know my identity because I didn't know who I was. I only knew who I was by the opinions that I had from my parents. Okay, um, identity is a number one thing. And I, I feel like um, a lot of us grow up without that, you know, with the new revelations of um, being able to meditate rather than um, accept the external world, we have, um, come upon something that gives us deeper 
understanding of ourselves as the storms and even as we you know look at jesus and the scriptures we can see that he wasn't talking about a storm outside which is uh the delusion or uh, that has been given to many people so we're breaking some things um uh, i would say breaking codes even according to the bible if i went there and i began to teach accordingly but my thing is is this here with everyone i heard everybody talk about what they would give and how this is a focused um kind of thing because when you start getting revelation about who you are negatively your shadow has wanted you to see it you know i asked somebody the other day the shadow is behind us or we you know and we wonder why if you have no shadow there's a problem right mm -hmm. the yes. focus of having children if we move away from that then i would say one of the biggest issues that we have is emotional. I didn't hear anybody talk about emotions. I heard giving, gifts. When you learn how to stabilize emotions, you become a victorious person. And it's not in um, stabilizing your emotions because we go through the storms of life, but the storm, did the storm get you or did you get the storm? Mastery is key. It don't matter what kind of situation we're walking through, mastery is key. The unconscious is the part that is um, not mastered, the lack of discipline. You can see the lack of discipline in yourself. Now, this is my thing. If it's not an outward storm, an inside storm is saying to you, are you disciplining yourself? Regardless of what you did over there with these folks here, back here, like my mom called me and um, she was upset. But it is because you still have all of this stuff emotionally from your past. If you do not deal with the storms of your past, which is inside, you're gonna always see people showing up to show you your past. You will never overcome. I asked the question, and then we're gonna um, you know, uh, close this out. I asked the question of a young lady, and I said, why is it so many, all of our black women are, um, they're single, they're divorced. And they will say all kinds of, of things, but I will tell you that we're divorced and we're single because we did not learn to master our emotions. We didn't learn to visit the past. We didn't learn these things. And even though I've taught people over the years, I feel like there's still a repetitious need and I don't wanna go back to the past of teaching. You have to figure out your storms, especially after you work with people for a time. Some things are not going to be relative until they visit and they actually discipline their minds to find answers. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that is not yeah. at anyone that will, you know, that's something that a lot of people try to escape emotions and discipline. Because if you didn't react a certain way, you wouldn't have an outcome that you don't like. That's emotion. Mm -hmm. If you were disciplined and if you discipline your mind, you will get a different outcome because the mind registers pain. And then the body says, I am that. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn this from going to school. I learned it from my own life. Yeah. So whenever someone is looking and they say because i get that i get this i don't know everything but baby i i learn as much as i can and then these days the things that i didn't talk about that i knew even about people around me i don't have to talk about you i'm telling you i know i know because see i'm I, it was a good thing that i had to be quiet for a season 
because I'm very observant. You can't learn nothing when you know everything. You can't be taught nothing when you know everything. When you are always talking and you cannot listen, you will not gain knowledge. Mm -hmm. When you are able to be quiet and listen to your own self and really get true answers. Like I did tell Ashley, I said, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I said, but what do you know, what are you going to do with Lyric? And I don't mean that in a passive way right now, because I don't care how free you are with whatever. You live in spirit and you live in this life. This world does not permit you to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, are you going to be with her for the rest of your life? Now, I'm going to ask that, and she can take that, right? These are mm -hmm. questions that you have to ask because you live in spirit and you live here. Whatever you take in the spirit, if it's not equivocable, equivocable to the laws of the universe, you're going to have problems here. You yep. have got to follow universal principles. You ain't got to follow mine. Now, I'm going I'm to take that off of me. And I'm going to say here, because I was not visiting the storm and taking care of it, it was possibly hurting other people, right? And mm -hmm. with that being said, when you come into a time of balance, and you can't make balance for yourself, Balance comes when Lyric understands that life is not going to allow that. You talk and say anything that you want all the time. Why? Because other people have to have the floor. This is an example. And I'm using her because I don't want to, you know, use uh, the grown women here, adults, um, there's a balance in verbal uh, conversations because if you're always talking, who's talking to you? Mm -hmm. Life is an exchange again. And many people will see in their own minds that they have that. But that's your mind. What about the person that you're connecting with? I've told Nicole many times, you, you, if you don't communicate, because we had that, both of us, coming from the same father, right? Who knows why, but anyway, if you don't communicate, but then if I'm working with women here and I say, if you don't communicate, then that means that I can't communicate with you. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that if you're in relationships, you don't look at it just from your point of view, but you look at it from theirs. Mm -hmm. That means that you may not have grown up with the right communication. I can't fault you for that. I forgive you moving on, right? Nothing yeah. in life should hold us up, but the thing about it is being honest between the, the receptacles that we deal with. Right. At work, at home. Do I take the same behavior home and am I the same person at home? Because what I find is that people can be nice when they're in the workplace, but then they'll go home and they're different. Mm -hmm. be, who you, be who you are all the way around and be honest, right? This is what our children get. But the emotional part that we need to get in order and discipline is at hand. Because if we have that, then our minds will come into the divine order and then our hearts would as well. That's a lot to grasp, but why would we just talk about healing inside but not be it outside? The storms that come are not other people's storms, they're ours. They, the, the storm is coming because it's showing us something about our character. What the other person gets is not up to my, it's not up to me. Mm -hmm. The storm gets your attention. So 
sometimes the people pull you into their storm, but it's still up to you not to get into it. Yes. So however uh, the outcome and however you can see different in this time of our lives, we're not supposed to be repeating situations. Now, if you do, that's up to you. I see your face. <laughs> How do I not do that? Look at the picture really good. The big picture, not my picture, your picture. Some people are just, they're centered on what they see, how they see it. The picture is big. Other people matter. First, I got to find out what it is in me that I am drawing this to me. One of the things that I found, and I'm going to leave this here, you guys can give final comments, is to, to, to talk about empaths. A lot of people believe because they're empathic and they feel, but they don't understand the responsibility with all of this stuff. And they need to get a better understanding of what empaths draw. So that'd be our next one, empaths. Empaths, okay, anybody, final, final uh, um, words so we can close off and... Um, well, I think empaths should have to learn how to differentiate between their feelings and, and other people's energy. And I think that's probably the uh, one thing that's challenging for a lot of empaths, because usually from my perspective, empaths are the ones who started off not even knowing who they were, but yet they were picking up on all of these energies and not able to really, and thinking and taking it on as their own. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that um, as you grow and mature spiritually, you are able to differentiate it. Um, and that's, that's been something, a theme that has been coming up for me in the past couple of days, because I kept having to remind myself like, oh yeah, this is not my energy. Like, you know, it's like, it's so easy to identify it because you understand it. But then I had to remind myself like, oh, wait a minute. That, no, that's not me. That's not how I feel, you know? So um, I think it's just a balance of, um, that you have to keep in check. Okay. Who's next? We're going to study the empaths next week. Who's next? I would say that the discipline is something that um, to the core of me that um, during this, these last six weeks that I really had to learn because um, sometimes when you're free spirited and you just want to spread your wings and fly, like there are certain measures that you're supposed to have in place that will give you the discipline so that, you know, you may not want to be so liberated sometimes because it may actually land you in a situation um, that now you have to walk through that particular lesson. And energies and being an empath and picking up on things and being very, very sensitive and you're still um, evolving and your own gift, if you don't have um, mastery or even discipline or balance in your own life, then those energies and things that you're gonna take on are gonna start birthing situations that you may not have wanted. And so getting to a place of um, maturity, um, discovery, studying, and discipline is um, something that definitely has to be uh, worked on. And I, I can speak for myself because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the biggest rogue people that I, I know I can be very, very rogue. Um, and, uh, but yet, my 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 dna requires some form of discipline and without that you become spiritually reckless and you can affect other people and contribute to things that you may not have realized that you contributed to and now you're going to be held accountable to it because you're the one with the gift they may not have had the gift or the insight but what you do with it um determines uh the outcome so i would say um 
discipline is, is very, very important, especially with us going forward with things that are coming to a head, that balance. Um, and not everybody knows discipline. They may, they may not have been raised in it. They may not understand it. But even in, even in the natural realm, if you notice, uh, even in some areas that may be on overkill, they still have a level of structure and balance um, you know, to uh, humanity. And even in your relationships where you may not be balanced or disciplined, you may have people that are around you that have that discipline. But that, again, is only to push you to a place to learn it for yourself, if that makes sense. Because I think, I think it's safe to say I can say that Miss Kim is definitely my balance structure. All right. Who's next? Um, I just wanted to say, um, just remember to look at every opportunity as a lesson to learn something, whether it be um, like whether you're learning it, as Jasmine mentioned, from a child, from your peers, or from someone that you regard as someone you respect, a mentor, what have you, just always be open to whatever lesson someone has to teach you because it's for the betterment of yourself, but then also as long as you keep getting yourself better, you push people around you to get better. But if you're not open to it, you miss the lesson and you repeat a cycle and you might be going around the mountain a hundred million times, not understanding why you're still going around the mountain. It's because you keep missing the same thing that is being thrown in your face. So just look for every opportunity to be a lesson, which will, which will potentially become a blessing. Um, um, anyways. <laughs> Um, it was my, one, one of my storms was dealing with my emotions. As, as she knows, because as she's my emotional balance, <laughs> she's water, I'm fire. I used to attack my emotions with the logical, with, with my logical self. And I actually like, you can't do that. You got to sit and feel. And I was like, but I don't want to feel. And that was what, that was where my storm was because my storms would be like, oh, we're going to make you feel. And it's going to hurt. And you gonna cry and no, no, I don't I don't want to feel like I don't I thought emotions were I'm not gonna say they, that they were beneath me but I thought that they were a waste of my time because if you felt then you got caught up in your feelings and if you got caught up in your feelings you were wasting time and that's something that I didn't have time for I, no you're not gonna waste my time well Ashley mate with <laughs> walking this journey with Ashley I basically like we're each other's accountability partners so she was like you need to you need to do with your emotions like you need to sit in it you need to feel it and one night like she literally she didn't, she didn't mean to but she made me cry <laughs> she made me cry <laughs> she's like you need to sit and deal with it and figure out the root of it and I was like well, I don't want to she's like oh well you're going to and I did and I and that's where my that's when I figured out that that balance was being called for because my moon is in Libra and Libras are all about balance and so if you're not emotionally balanced you can't know especially if you're an empath you don't know what what's yours and what's not you don't know what's your chair and what's not your chair and I've had to figure that out even though I've been a little hard-headed about it and a lot of my lessons have been spankings really or me being put on my behind, but it's it's you have to have the emotional balance to get through it, to get through anything. Good. All right. Uh Nicole. I learned that um within all of this, I have to go with it. We all have to go within self, um, more so anything to get the answers we need for what we need to do. Um, and make sure that we do be mindful of others um, energy but mainly my thing is um opening myself up to a unlimited um how can i say idea of perception um instead of being so enclosed in what i thought um we have to go we have to just kind of look at it like it's our mind is a world 
and we have been only mm -hmm. assessing to just maybe one percent of the world so mm -hmm. let's get excited and know that it's always other options there's other options to from fear is other options from anger is other options from being disgusted sad lonely is always other options um, because those are the things that promote that make us do what we do daily in a negative way so long as we can see that it's other options um, I've been abused by men physically mentally when I realized I abused myself not say that it was okay but when I realized that I've been an abuser to myself mm -hmm. because I did not open up to the different possibilities that there are other good things out there that I could have. So I'm going to be working on being repetitious and being mindful of myself and others and keep going forward to change my perception of those beliefs I had back that I thought would help me. Cause now That's I see important. I, I think that, um, that is um, awesome what you said, that your abusers actually abused you because you were uh, abusing yourself. Yeah, that took a long um, time. I've been thinking about that. So like- I think it's a powerful thing. Um, and it reaches a person in a place if they actually hear it, um, where they are finding their own responsibility for these abuse situations, you know? Um, because it's hard to get a person out of the mindset of others and what they're doing to them. Mm -hmm. But we've done it to ourselves because yeah. I said in the beginning that I grew up, it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm blaming my mother. I grew up this way. I could have clicked in the consciousness, but I feel like it was a part of my experience that would help other people when I wake up to what it was that had me closed off. Right. Um, or the fact that acceptance was something that I needed and not that my parents' acceptance mattered and then taking that into my adult life um, from their teaching that I would only be accepted if I did things the way that mm -hmm. they taught me, but they didn't show me that. Right. So this is important it's not um for me to interrogate my mother and father but it's for me to carry on life in a more um positive way no more toxicity anyone that brings it the door is closed because that's not who i am in this season so who are we as we're going forward the changes and mad you that I feel like we should know that we cannot fool ourselves. We can't fool ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because when stuff starts showing up like your past, mm -hmm. it's letting you know that you ain't you ain't finished with this. Right. Now, right. when it starts showing up, I feel like I have the responsibility to say that I don't want it like that no more. Mm -hmm. Why? because I didn't have the voice in the past to say it. I accepted things that people gave me and it's hard for people to see that, but that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. This is the season of liberation. Consciousness wakes up and tells you what you're going to do with information and how you're going to process and use it, right? Yeah. And so whatever you learned today, yesterday, actually at this moment is gone what are you going to do in this season of gemini when it says everything that you learned from the past is done north node is telling us that we're going forward and nothing is the same even when everybody else is operating the same what are you going to do and so i'm going to leave um uh i'm going to close up with this here session and then we can um if y'all want to keep going with it, you surely can, but I'm going to go ahead and finish with this because I got a couple of other um, things, videos to make. And so God bless everybody. Thank you for sharing. And think about that empath next week. And empaths are not perfect. 
because they draw imperfect situations. All right. Mm. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.